All right, guys, on this episode, I have a long conversation with Jeremy Mason McGraw of Global Image Creation. Uh, Jeremy is an amazing photographer, as you can see here on the screen, and he has some great, great input for those of you who want to go from real estate to interior design or just kind of having a general understanding for the photography business in general. So I highly recommend you guys pop in some headphones or put this on your speaker because this is going to be a long one. and You guys can kind of just listen along as we talk a little bit here. So here we go. A lot of other real estate photographers aspire to shoot interiors, whether it be interior design or, or luxury hotels like you do. So I think there's all good information to kind of make that transition a little bit. Sure. All right, how's it going, everybody? This is Jonathan right here with Guns Media, and I'm joined today by Jeremy McGraw of Global Image Creation. And... Um, I just brought Jeremy on just because I want to ask him a few quick questions about how he got into the industry and how he, what he does in his business and how it can help you implement things into your business. Um, so first off, Jeremy, can you tell us like about your background and how you got into the industry? Yeah, it's a, it's a, I'll try to, to consolidate it into a short story. Um, sure. at the, um, I think one of the things I wanted to, a lot of the people on TikTok, I get a lot of comments from people that do real estate and they're at, they, I get asked a lot of real estate photography questions and I've actually, um, I've only shot like three real estate listings in my life and it's always mm -hmm. been like favors. I, I have no idea how the real estate uh, industry actually works. Yeah. Um, I mean, only only from other real estate photographers. Right, so yeah. um, oftentimes I'm just sort of like, well, I've heard that it's like this. And um, my background's kind of uh, different because I didn't actually come up through a, a, a straight trajectory into photography. My background was actually in uh, like live entertainment. I used to do theatrical set design and lighting. Um, and, uh, I ended up working on a cruise ship in 2000 and I was, uh, sailing around the world in a cruise ship. And, um, when I got off the ship, uh, I came back to the U S and I was, I kind of became obsessed with this idea. Like, how can I live a life like that, but not have to live on a ship, um, yeah. and have like sort of the, the, you know, be stuck on a ship and there's a lot of, it's, it's a bit like, it's a bit like living in a high school, only there's drinking. <laughs> and so um, so uh, uh, I, I kind of bumped around a bunch of different ideas. And it was kind of like, what can I do with my skill set that would allow me to travel, um, but not have to, to, to do that type of a job? Right. And uh, I tried a lot of different things. And then around, I think it was probably 2002, maybe 2003, a friend of mine was designing a website for a, uh, a resort association in Hawaii. And I had talked to him a couple of times about like, you know, I'd love to find a way to travel. And, and uh, this guy was a software designer that lived in Hawaii and he did um, uh, websites, which seemed to me like that was the, like he had kind of found the way to do that for him, you know, like he built this spa reservation software right. and then he just lived off of the money from that and lived in Hawaii really well. And so uh, he hooked me up with this really incredible opportunity to come out to Hawaii for five weeks and photograph uh, this area of the big island for this new website that this resort association wanted. And so that association is, uh, I think there was like 12 major hotels uh, um, and uh, when I got there, I started, the idea was to get natural beauty shots that they could use on the website. So it wasn't specific about hotels and it was just sort of to, to market this area as a destination. And while I was there, uh, the, I was uh, shooting every morning and then I would, you know, go and walk through these hotels and get their brochures and stuff. And I noticed that all of them had these similarities. They had these beautiful pictures of the beaches and they had the, everything that was outside, like the scuba diving and all that stuff was, was extraordinary. And then the pictures of the rooms were these sort of yellow murky looking, uh, like they were not color balanced and they, they didn't look really good. They definitely weren't up to the standard of the other images that the resorts used or they were super, super heavily composited where they just, they, they shot, they clearly shot a model room in a studio and then superimposed the window on it. And it looked mm -hmm. like that. And um, 
This is right. Um, it's just, and forgive me if I'm going too long, just <laughs> coming no, up. No, it's, it's hard to tell this quickly. I'm just trying to, but um, the, uh, this is right around the time that online travel booking was becoming the dominant form of booking travel. So, mm. um, uh, you know, this is 2002, 2003. And it was also at the same time that digital photography was actually becoming a, a, um, a serious thing that you could, you could really take decent images with. The, so, um, the D1X had just come out and it was like the first sort of, I, I think the body itself cost five grand and it was like a 10 yeah. megapixel camera, but it was the first real digital SLR that you could actually shoot a decent picture with and it wasn't like a hundred thousand dollar camera. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of those things kind of converged and I was, I, I realized on that trip, it's like, I've never shot, I hadn't shot an interior matter of fact i hadn't done any um a, a lot of shooting with lighting at all like I, I i took my only real training is i took one year of photography in high school that's that's the only um like formal training i guess i had in photography and that was on film and more of that was about dark room and stuff like that than it was about but you know i think i worked with a flash like once you know so but um, with the live entertainment stuff, I'd worked with theatrical lighting. Um, and uh, I kind of put those together in my head and I realized like, I realized what the problem with these images was as well as the fact that I could now um, build a, a, a kit of speed lights um, uh, that were you know small and compact, I could get uh, radio triggers like pocket wizards. Um, and so I could, I could have like this wireless lighting kit that I could then travel, I could shoot the pictures, I could edit them on a laptop and I could deliver the images. So I didn't need film, uh, I didn't need a huge amount of gear um, and I could kind of just travel and do this. So that became the goal. It was like, actually I can do this, you know, like, like and, and so I, I did a bunch of things. I had a little bit of knowledge of website building and SEO because I, I had friends that were really like professionals doing that. And so I did a little bit of HTML and um, I Googled like hotel photographer just to see like if there were people out there doing that. Right. And it was kind of another perfect storm kind of moment. There were people that were doing that, but nobody had actually purpose built a site optimized for searches related to hotel photography. So it was all right. like a page on their general purpose photography site. There was never like a hotel photographer. And so built the first website that was optimized for hotel photography searches, uh, bought the gear that I needed to do this and basically taught myself how to shoot rooms. Uh, and then I went out to Hawaii um, and uh, kind of shot some free shoots uh, at a couple of different hotels. And um, I, I think I, I was, I also used to take a trip to Australia every year and I would just basically like live on a friend's couch and hang out in Australia for the winter, like for a month or two. And while I was there, I, I shot some, uh, a couple of free shoots at uh, resorts in Australia. Yeah. Um, and that gave me the portfolio uh, to put that stuff out there. And then it, it kind of built from there. So you I had a number from there. Yeah. I, I, and it wasn't like immediate, but I, I had a lot of things going for me because the time period was right. And uh, you know, the, the, the technological situation, I guess was right. Right. Um, so what that became was my goal was to travel and to shoot pictures. And, you know, I did that and kind of like, uh, learned quickly because you know ultimately you have to deliver <laughs> something when you get there yeah. and it can't look like like you're tr you, you're you're figuring it out but um, I was able to do pretty well and um, that was kind of the the the, the starting of it um, whenever I was not working uh, this is getting into the interior design photos which I've tried to, sure, sure. <laughs> to get to because um, uh, a lot of people ask me like oh how can I do that and I'm like I have right. no idea because the time period is so different now like you know there's a lot more there are a lot of great photographers that are local in all the places that I work right. and if you were somebody who was starting out that you wanted to do the hotels like that um, I, I, you, you might be able to do you'd probably have to take a different you know path but um, whenever I got back and I was not working and traveling, I started to take shoots with this local lifestyle style and interior magazine. And that was actually really good because uh, those types of shoots were, I had to work a lot faster and I had to do, you know, like with a hotel, 
I can work slower and I have a lot more resources available to me. So there's, there are these beautiful rooms and these incredible views and I can, you know, call and get the florist to put flowers in or food or, you know, whatever. And you've got sort of a crew that's there and they kind of know how to do this stuff. But with like a, a small magazine or an interior designer, uh, they kind of show up, they're like, this is the house, you know, like make it look yeah. good. And so that was a completely different skill set, And, I think that magazine was sort of the training for um, how can I work with interior designers uh, and and capture like home interiors and do it more quickly. Um, and and in doing that, I also learned like um, one one of the big things that I that I always try to to encourage people to think about is there's no market for being the best photographer. Um, uh, you know, like you can go and you can take the best pictures in the world, but ultimately, particularly as you know, if you're working in real estate, like, you know, they have a budget, that's all they mm -hmm. want to pay. And there might be somebody that wants better pictures, but what they want to get, they want to get the best images for that time period that you're in the house for the money that they want to spend. Like there's all these other things right. in that box. Right. Um, and so you've got to be able to, do your best work under all those constraints, right? Understand, yeah. Um, and so uh, um, that was what I realized with interior designers. Um, uh, and uh, well, it kind of relates to the magazines, but uh, um, ultimately they sell their work through pictures. Like they make, right. they, they do an amazing house, um, uh, but the people that are going to be hiring them, very few of them are actually going to visit that house. Um, and so most of them are going to see it from an advertisement or from their website or from their Instagram channel, or in a lot of cases, they do awards and they do editorials. So um, they'll send out the pictures that I take to magazines to get free coverage for their designs and editorial stuff, right. or they'll submit them for awards. Um, and the thing that you got to realize is both the magazine and the awards are judging their design purely on the photos. They never visit those houses. Right. right. So if you are, um, and a lot of times the awards are judged by photo editors of magazines or websites as well. And so um, the ROI for my type of client is that you can have, you can use these mag these pictures and once you get them shot, if you, also put in the effort to submit them to awards and submit them to editorial, you can actually get a lot of free coverage because magazines are usually really, really tight on budget. Very few of them even have their own photographers. And if they can get away with not having to photograph something, you're like 10 times more likely to get published right. because it's easier. It's a better business decision, right? Right. Um, so, from my perspective, shooting with interior designers, that's the biggest thing that I would talk about. Like my work has, it doesn't have nearly as much, at least the sales pitch has near, it doesn't have nearly as much to do with, um, uh, you know, like this is a better picture than the pictures you're taking as mm -hmm. this better image is going to give you exposure that if you were paying for it would be far more expensive than hiring right. me. That's, that's um, something that, that I definitely always try to pitch to. It's, it's not so much they're paying for the photo because it looks great, right? It, it's the investment for them. What's the ROI that they're going to get on it? And that's right. why I love, you know, real estate or interior photography because there's, it's a business transaction for them. So although they're paying us for our creative skills, it's an investment for them. So as long as it does well the first time, they'll call you back a second time and a third yeah. time. And there's that continuation of work. If you're, if you're shooting the images of people, the homes that they're selling um, and you're, you're doing a good job and those homes are selling, uh, you're mm -hmm. going to get a lot more work than if, you know, you take longer than they want and you want right. more money and, the, and you know, the pictures don't necessarily do better right. than them shooting with an iPhone. Like there it's um, I think, uh, in any creative field, we, especially if you're new, I think the older you get and the longer you do it, the more you realize like, you know, my favorite picture from a shoot is never the client's favorite picture from a shoot. Yep. There's, there's no intrinsic, like, this is good and this is bad. It's all subjective based it really on, is. yeah, what their expectations are. And so I might see a shot and look at it and go, 
this, the lighting for this room was really tricky. Uh, mm -hmm. And I got this shot that looks amazing to me because I did all this stuff uh, and they look at it and they're like, man, that's a nice shot of uh, the front porch. You know, like there's no light yeah. in the shot at all. It's just like that. That's really pretty. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know. but um, you just kind of learn to live with that. And it, it yeah. realize like uh, the, the business of doing anything. Um, you can't get the business confused with the creativity because if you're doing it for a business, it's no longer art. Um, if you have a client, uh, you're really working to support their needs Right. And you're, you're not working to fulfill your creative vision, you know, so you, right. you want to bring your skills to the table and help them accomplish what they need to do. And in your case, that's selling a home. Uh, in my case, that's selling creative services. But right. you always have to be uh, um, aware of that uh, because I think a lot of the, the frustration as a creative person is when you, when you start confusing what the point of the photos is. Yeah, speaking to that creativity, so I know you put in a lot of effort on a lot of images and, and the client might not ultimately like that as their favorite. Um, what caught me, what caught your attention for me was your the quality of your photos. I came across you on TikTok and I thought it was amazing and it's obvious that you use flash photography because that's what you speak about a lot. Um, why do you prefer to use flash over ambient light? Is there a particular reason for that? Well, I'll tell you, I mean, there, there's, there's a reason why I like to use it as a photographer, but um, there is also a business reason that I think I learned from hotels, uh, mm -hmm. but it plays really, really important role with working with designers. And it's something that may not necessarily translate to real estate because I know that you're just, you've got a lot less time. Like I have the, the luxury of having a lot more time in a space. Because, right. um, but um one of the main things is in camera, like everything I can capture in camera means that I can have my client standing next to me and look at the screen and say, how do you like this? Right. And they look at it and they go, oh, that's too dark or, oh, I didn't even see that. And there's something that they want to rearrange. Um, as a photographer, you can visualize these things. So say you're doing something where you're compositing, you can take three pictures, one of the windows, one of the dark side of the room, one of the bright side of the room, and look at those and kind of imagine how they're going to go together and you right. understand what you're going to get out of that. But most people can't. Um, and the ability to have it on a screen in front of them while you can still physically make changes is incredibly important to what I do for the client experience because when the shoot is over, there's very, very little left to their imagination. They can leave that shoot and they're like, wow, that was a really good shoot. Yeah. So if I'm compositing stuff, I don't have the assurance that they actually understand what they got. And with hotels, this was an issue because you'd, you'd go back and you'd, you'd composite the stuff together and you'd send it and they'd look at it and they'd be like, you know, maybe they would look at it and they didn't like the lighting that I put into it. Like they didn't like right. the look of the lighting, you know. Um, and I, I actually, early on, I'd get comments like that, like, uh, oh, can it feel more natural, you know, or whatever like that. And they start using these terms that mean something to them, but it's like, you know, a, a comment subjective. like, yeah, it's all subjective. Yeah. And so now you're dealing with like, what do they mean? Uh, you know, and it, it ends up being like this long thing. So you end up right. like doing these revisions um, and what I realized is the more that I can get in the shot on a screen and make them look at it and approve it. So sometimes if I'm shooting with a, with a hotel, the marketing mm -hmm. director doesn't have time to be there all the time, but I will shoot and text pictures of the screen and just text it to them say, does this look good? And they might look at it and they go like, Oh, that's the wrong, uh, that's the wrong bed setup. We put the pillows like yeah. this. You know, I wouldn't have even known that. Um, with an interior designer, though, it's very much about the mood. They might look at it and say something like, uh, oh, well, you know, that was some custom fabric on the couch and, and you don't really get the, the, you can't see the texture of yeah. it. And so, um, in, in on, you know, as you've probably seen on TikTok, like every time I post something, there's at least one person, like, I like the before better, man, that yeah. looks fake, you know, it's whatever like that. Case. It's like, I'm not trying... In, with what I do, I'm not trying to make reality. Like we're not selling the house and the room with my images. We're selling the mood and the style of the designer. And 
coming from a theatrical background, I literally visualize the room as this is a stage and I want to put a spotlight on that and I want to put a spotlight on that and I want to put a spotlight on that. And so when the designer tells me that like, oh, well, you know, this is some custom fabric or that art, that piece of art is really important. Like I'm going to showcase that in the image. It does not translate literally to the real lighting in the room. So um, that's kind of going back to what do your clients actually need out of the photo? If I was shooting real estate, I would be much more uh, um, uh, focused on does this deceive the nature of the room or does it actually depict the reality of the room? You know, because you right. want a much more flawed image that was a much more real picture of a room if you're trying to sell the house. Um, to be more uh, rather realistic, right. Yeah, but with what I'm doing, if the, uh, if the sun doesn't actually set on the side of the house, but it would look good to have a beam of light coming into the window and it would highlight that couch and it would put light on that picture, um, I'm going to do that because I'm not deceiving anyone. Like, you know, it's really about like, is the mood of this room uh, accurate to the aesthetic of the designer? And they're right. there and they're telling me like, oh, I don't like the way that looks. And some of them like moody. And some of them like, you know, bright and airy, and we adjust it based on that. But that ability and that freedom to control all of those things. Um, and I think you probably saw the, um, uh, the video that I did of the porch. Like, yes. that's another reason why lighting is really important. So I go show up to a shoot, it's raining all day. And part of this thing, this was actually a vacation rental that a designer did. Mm. And they've got this huge porch that has this amazing lake view. And if I was to shoot that with natural lighting, uh, I could do a lot in Photoshop, but I would probably never achieve the look that I got with the lighting um, right. in there. And so I shot that, we waited for it to be raining a little bit less where there was sort of a haze and you could actually see the view. And then I shifted the color temperature to make it look twilight and lit the porch like it was evening. And that shot was shot at 10 o'clock in the morning but it looks like this beautiful evening view. And right. again, it's that mood, you know, you like- You never know. Yeah, but it's also like, you know, even if, uh, I always look at like, the, there's, um, sorry, I can, I can ramble sometimes, just okay. stop me. If, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the things I, I like to say to people is uh, there is no reality in photography. Um, uh, there's intent, uh, you know, and then you use your tool to, you, the tools that you have, to communicate your opinion of a mood. And so it's like, mm -hmm. even if you are uh, a press photographer, like, you know, what you choose to put inside of this frame and when you choose to snap that picture and even like what kind of, you know, exposure settings you use can really determine the meaning of a moment, but that's not real. It's still an interpretation of what happens. So there might be something going on over here in the frame and there's something over here that we didn't see that could actually really change your interpretation of that and so every layer that you add on to that you know they're all decisions that the photographer is making and so um, uh, where the that line of this isn't uh, this isn't acceptable or this isn't authentic it really comes into the, what your what your the integrity of the photographer I guess what you're actually trying to say and what you're using the image for versus what the reality is you know like um, right. and uh, but uh, there's a lot of resistance sometimes to people like when you when you add this or when you Photoshop this or whatever like that. That's just that's just you know making it fake. And I've I've abandoned a lot of those things because I'm like it's all fake. You know, like none of it. Yeah. It's a two dimensional. It's a three dimensional moment in time. You're translating to a two dimensional stopped frame. You know, like yeah everything's lost <laughs> just in doing that. Like there's nothing real in that frame by the time you're yeah. done, you know? So, um, but uh, anyway, the, uh, yeah. uh, I guess, so is, I noticed that you do some interior, like uh, some design, you work with designers as well. Like is the bulk of your work still in real estate or what are your, what are your thoughts and your aspirations? 99% of my, my work is in real estate. And that's kind of why I bring you on is, is not only for, for myself, but I know a lot of other real estate photographers aspire to shoot interiors and in, whether it be interior design or, or luxury hotels like you do. So I think this is all good information to kind of make that transition a little bit. 
Um, I've shot maybe about one interior shoot ever and I enjoyed it, but um, by no means, I, I don't think I was prepared to the level that you shoot on, but it was definitely a good experience. Um, I would like to do more. And I think hopefully a lot of people who are watching this are, are getting valuable information because they also want to get into this realm. Um, they're, they're so different, aren't they? I mean, the, 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 uh, one of the things I like to say is photography uh -huh. is like languages, you know, so you can be amazing at speaking Spanish and that's not going to do you any good if you have to talk to a Korean person. Um, uh, you know, the same is true in photography from, uh, and a lot of people get into it thinking that there's a sort of a general purpose nature to it. Like I can do this and I'll do this uh -huh. and whatever. Um, or I want to do this, but um, I can pay the bills with shooting. I, I hate to use examples of one or the other because it, feels, it sounds like I'm dogging on one. And like my, 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 my opinion is if you're able to make a living as a creative professional in anything, like you're already like a, in the top 10% right. of people, you know, cause it's a hard thing to take that to a level where you can actually afford to do it as a profession. Right. But um, uh, uh, I've seen a lot of people that, do one thing with the aspirations to do something else uh, and kind of hope that, well, I'll work on this and then, you know, I'll do this on the side and maybe that'll lead into something. Um, and uh, I guess this might be, uh, this isn't really the right point I was trying to make, but you should always focus on uh, a good chunk of your time on the thing that you actually want to do, even if it's not uh, something that is going to pay you yet. Because what I find is the more, mental effort you put on something the more of that you get um and right. so if you're shooting say you're shooting weddings because you got into weddings through a friend asked you to do it and you took a picture and then somebody who was there was like oh you should shoot my wedding and like you know not even saying it's that easy because wedding photography i think is one of the hardest yeah, things in the world <laughs> i'm hard. not at all saying but a lot of people do and i think that's also some of the um uh some of the frustration with professional wedding photographers is that they're competing with somebody's cousin you know like that's always yeah. <laughs> there's always a friend or a cousin that yeah a cousin who it. can do it cheaper or something like yeah that. yeah and you know yeah. no matter what you're doing you're always com sort of you're not really competing with that but you kind of are um mm -hmm. in that there, there's always there are always going to be clients that are looking at that like oh i can get it cheaper with this person and whatever and they think you can get more out of it but maybe that's where uh, one of the things that's always really, really important is to think about that ROI conversation, but also defining what you are and what you do. Um, yeah. And so when, when you're talking about real estate, you're talking about a much more competitive industry. There are way more people that are shooting real estate than there are that are specializing in interior designers because there are not that many interior designers compared to real estate agents and right. real estate listings. Um, and the turnover of real estate is crazy. So there's always new things to be shot. Um, so if you're in that type of a mindset where you're all about like, um, I'm going to network and like every real estate agent in town is going to know who I am and I'm going to be shooting for all of them. And you want to move to something that is, uh, is a smaller uh, client base and it's right. more, uh, more based on creativity the question is, uh, as you sort of, you know, take it in that direction, uh, you also have to continue to define what is it that I provide that is different than what everybody else is providing. Mm -hmm. A lot harder to do that in something where you've got a ton of competition in a, a much more price-driven industry than in something that is, you know, there are obviously still budgets, but um, uh, somebody that is a designer that is wanting you to capture their creative expression is going to be far more uh, tuned into, you know, what it looks like as well as, you know, all, the yeah. ROI and all the other stuff. It's so, not as price sensitive, definitely. It, it, it is, but it's a different type of, it's, it's, it's price sensitive plus like, you, mm -hmm. you know, if they can't afford to do it, they can't afford to do it. Um, uh, and if they've got the money to do it, then it's also like, there's the reason that I'm spending the money on this as opposed to, um, you know, this other photographer that's cheaper mm -hmm. is because um, I put 
all this work into these rooms and I've never gotten a good, like it doesn't, uh, it doesn't look like, the room that I designed. Yeah. And I think there, I don't know if you, the, the, the one TikTok video that I did that I shot the back cover of that magazine with the interior, like that's kind of what I was sort of trying to point out. But um, there's this back cover of this magazine uh, that my work is featured in, in, a, in an editorial piece in the middle of the magazine. And somebody mm -hmm. paid for a back cover advertisement that was would have been several thousand dollars to get the back cover. I, mean, I, I don't know their exact pricing, but it was probably like three to four grand right. for that back cover. Um, and those pictures, they look kind of gray, like they don't print well. They, they just shot them. Uh, it looked like they used as an automated HDR thing. So it wasn't even like well done HDR. It was like, you know, like HDR in your iPhone or something. Right. And so they spent four grand on a back cover and they put pictures in that didn't really give them any benefit, you know, to everyone's going to see this back cover and nobody is going to understand my design from the pictures right. that I put in that advertising. And that's something that happens a lot too, because it's always based on, you know, what people in every industry but also every person it's like what they value you know what what they value or what they understand the value of and so mm -hmm. somebody understands it's a big deal to be on the back cover of a magazine because you know if, if somebody slaps the magazine down on a table they got a 50 50 chance of being present you know on that thing <laughs> um uh, but they look at like 200 bucks for a photo shoot you know like like well, that's what I, you know, anything above that is like, oh, that, 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 that's, that's really expensive. You know, like, what am I getting for that? <laughs> you yeah. know, that's, and it's almost like you just want to walk away from the conversation when, even when it gets to that point. You're times, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get everything you want for 200 bucks. You get, you get exactly what you deserve. Yeah. Um, the, uh, but, um, you know, inside of that magazine was an editorial with my images, the pictures, uh -huh. like, and it's not a, I won't even use my pictures as an example. There are other editorials in there. The pictures look better than they look like on the outside cover of this magazine. And so you're actually doing yourself a disservice because someone flips through a magazine and they see these beautiful, bright, vibrant images. Um, uh, and in those editorials, they were free because the person that, you know, the magazine either shot them themselves or the, the individual, uh, clients like the clients that I work with submitted those things to a magazine. Right. So they're getting a full page ad basically. Um, that's not an ad with really pretty pictures uh, that because they translate well to print and then right. they flip to the back cover and you have paid for the back cover and you've got these gray, like flat images. Um, that's, that you know that's not helping you that's actually like oh well not going to use these guys you know just yeah. from that from that one picture from that one viewpoint and so uh, i completely forgot what my point was <laughs> but, <laughs> but the uh, you get the idea somehow yeah. in that nebulous statement i just made yeah yeah um definitely so i got a couple more questions here that way i don't steal too much of your time but i think <laughs> we've gotten a lot of good value on the topic of price, while you're kind of speaking of, you know, price and, and how people are kind of sensitive to that a little bit. Um, when pricing out your shoots without telling us, you know, what you charge or anything like that, when pricing them out, how, how exactly are you charging the client? Is it like on a per photo basis or are there certain parameters that you're looking at to kind of understand that way? What works for yeah, you? Yeah, that, so that's always, that, that, that's always a hard, like, within your own industry and within your own market, like you have to figure that out for you. The main thing about pricing that I would say is you need to believe your own pricing. Um, and so if you're going and you're saying this is how much I charge and you are, um, you, you took that advice from some influencer or some article that you read and you really don't even believe that you're worth that. And you're, you know, like yeah. it's not going to, you're not going to do well with that pricing structure. You've got to be able to sit down and if somebody just flat out goes like, you know, uh, this is a crazy amount of money. Why do you charge that with confidence, believing it, you've got to be able to defend that. And it's not like right. that happens very often. Most likely what happens is you give them the price, they go, oh, okay, thanks. Well, um, we'll have a conversation. We'll let you know. And they never let you know <laughs> if yeah. you were too high. Um, so, uh, Pricing, uh, so when I started doing hotels, I started with a day rate because that's what everybody else did. 
And what I would run into is every now and then uh, I'd be in a situation where you'd have a marketing director that's like, well, we paid for a day and they would try to cram in as many shots in that day as possible. Didn't always happen, but um, uh, when you're young and starting out, uh, if you don't have a lot of kind of credibility behind you or the ability to like, you know, not be, a, you can't ever be an asshole to your clients, but right. uh, there needs to be a mutual respect there. And so, um, uh, you know, you've got to sort of build relationships where they know you're taking care of them and they're being fair to you. You don't want toxic clients, even if you think the opportunity is really good, it'll end up stressing you out so much. But um right. So you're in a situation where like, here's my day rate. They're like, great. You go there and they're like, we've got 40 shots lined up today, you know, or something like, <laughs> and like I can't shoot. So you end up just snapping pictures to try to make them happy when the reality is that situation to do good work doesn't exist anymore. You just gave it yeah. away when you agreed to do the thing. And so I switched my pricing because I actually, I hated that. I hated having that conversation. I switched it to per space uh, where it was like, I will shoot a few shots of, you know, it basically revolved around a lighting setup. So I'll, I'll right. set up lighting and I'll shoot this space and you'll get one or two master shots of the space and a couple of details. And so right. if you add the bathroom, then you'll get the same, you know, but it, that, that way there was a quantifiable thing that they could look at. Um, and that took, it took a while because I had to sort of train them how to even know what that was. And so they had to go through their list and there was a lot of back and forth, but it made it a lot easier to shoot because when you got there, if they were adding stuff, it's like, great, you know, that's going to cost more money. And so, right. um, you know, there, there was, it was really easy to control that way, but it was a lot of... <coughs> It was a lot of education to to make that possible. And I think if I didn't already have momentum on my side, it would be a lot harder. You know, like they already had to want you uh, to, to be there to do that, um, to, to, to have that long conversation to figure out this is how many shots we need in total. And I would look at it and break it down and we'd have a conversation. We'd figure out, all right, this is how many days we're going to need. This is how many um, images, but that allowed me to control, to make it manageable days where I could afford to take my time and they didn't feel like they were getting, uh, they were getting, you know, like I was deliberately it was slowly. It was Yeah, or shooting slowly so they'd have to add another day. And that's another yeah. thing too, like adding another shot is way cheaper. You know, if you're paying by the shot, adding another shot is way cheaper than adding another day. And so, right. you know, um, and I, I never broke it down to half days or by hourly. Um, and so when I was doing hotels, uh, and I still usually do that with hotels because it's just, a, it's an easier transaction all the way around. With interior designers, completely different budgets and it's a really again it's a different language you're doing a different service completely yeah. and so went back to day rates on that but um uh, whenever i'm talking to them i have for one thing i have it all in writing and that's a really really important thing like uh um, even if you've got a client that hires you all the time like having a, a usage agreement that a lawyer actually looked over for you and it's got your logo on it and whatever. And it's like, all right, you know, I'm going to do, uh, I usually shoot stuff in, um, uh, in like, you know, I'll go and shoot with the one designer for like five days uh, mm -hmm. and they'll have their houses lined up and they'll just, you know, do that. And so each one of those trips that I take to do that, they sign a usage agreement that's just like, you know, these are the images and this is what you can do with them and this is what you can't do with them. So it's things like they can't have me shoot pictures and then take them and sell them to their cabinet manufacturer and their tile company. Right. And, you know, like, because those people need to relicense them from me. Right. They can do anything they want for their own direct promotion. Um, I don't have uh, time limits on those because it's just, it's, there are very few designers that, that would deal with that or that it's that's affordable for them to do it where you've right. got like, you know, in the same way, I'm sure with real estate as well, like you're not going to go to a realtor and say you've got, you know, three years to use these and then yeah. not that they'll matter in three years anyway, but 
um, that that time constraint would look really out of place in that particular industry. Um, it works for things like uh, commercial photography and big campaigns and stuff. Right, but, right. Um, anyway, but having a basic like work contract and then a basic usage agreement and then just reminding them by sending them a new usage agreement, maybe every year or whatever like that, it keeps it really on the table and level so they know what they can and can't do. And it's a really comfortable conversation. And I'll get clients to just email me and say, hey, I want to do this with the photo. Is that okay? Okay. Um, and it's way easier than having this uncomfortable conversation where you had a conversation once and you didn't write anything down and they didn't necessarily not under, you know, understand it. Right. And then you see the images uh, being, you know, uploaded to uh, iStock photo and they're, they're selling them, you know, like, <laughs> you know and you're like, uh, um, it's so. funny. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I've, I've, I've also learned that it's really important to have, to set up the expectations in the beginning. It's, it's best that everybody has a general understanding. This is what you're getting. This is how long it's going to take to shoot. This is the price. These are what you can use the images for and yada, 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 right? It's, it's better than to just leave it open for interpretation and they say, oh, well, I thought I could do this, you know, sure. even though that wasn't the case. And it, um, it's, I, I like to keep everything on a single page. So it's not being, yeah. you don't, you should never come off like, you know, they shouldn't be signing a five page contract on what they can. I can't like, it just needs to be a really simple understanding that right. just basically covers your bases. But that, that, that's one of the hardest things to get comfortable with at first. And then when you start doing it, you're like, why didn't I do this? You know, like whenever you actually get in the mm-hmm. habit of doing it, uh, it becomes so natural and it makes things so much easier that it's always a thing, you know, it's the biggest thing that I wish I would have done earlier on. And I tell everybody like, you know, pay the money, like, you know, even write it yourself, but just get a lawyer to look at it um, and just tell them, I don't want a long, like sign your life away thing. I want a really easy, like bullet points, simple contract that somebody can look at. They're not intimidated by it. You throw that out there before, uh, before you book the shoot and it just makes things so much easier in all those gray areas. Um, And it also gives you time making that document makes you uh, think about what you actually need out of the images. Because I think that's another thing too, is sometimes you don't know. And that's probably why those conversations can feel so uncomfortable because when someone actually challenges you, you're like, "Uh, Uh, no, I never uh, really thought about that. (laughs) And the, yeah, not only that, it also builds credibility too. People, people will take you more serious. Um, I shot, I had a shoot yesterday. I shot these really large wood veneer panels. They're about seven feet by four feet, really big item. We shot 48 of them. And this is not something I typically do, but during the slower seasons in the winter or the fall, I'll take on projects like this. And ultimately they interviewed three photographers and I won because I had a proposal that was about five pages and at the end of it, it also had, um, you know, a statement of work of what was to be expected. This is the timeline and and this is everything that's going down. And I was really the only candidate who had that. And they said, although you were more expensive than the other guys, you look like you had your crap together essentially. Right. So then they said, you know, that's kind of why we went with you. And think that it's important to have that kind of stuff because you'll win more but also speaking to that also it's yesterday I found this information out because I asked so it's always good to know what what the client's thinking so next time you're on a shoot I I recommend people just just speak to your client ask oh how'd you find me why'd you hire me why'd you pick me and knowing all those little bits of information is going to help you win more and more and more Work, work is ultimately, it's all about relationships. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's like a really cliche thing to say, but um, it's, it's, it's totally true in that um, even when a client approaches you, so you get an inquiry online, uh, if you were to, uh, you know, the more conversations that you have with them, you don't want to waste their time. You want to be clear and concise. But at the same time, if you have, a two sentence email reply saying this is how much my shoot is, whatever, you know, and you, and you send that to them, uh, you know, you're, you've kind of like dead into the conversation. Like they made it a binary choice as opposed to 
um, you know, like either taking the time to explain your services or I, I feel like I'm, I'm, not re not representing my point very well because you, you don't want to like <laughs> over you don't want to send them like a 10 page email it's like right, yeah right, this right. Is, like they don't care you know like but uh, um uh i guess after you after you start working with a client uh it's less about um all of those nuts and bolts and what you're charging and whatever like that and it's really more about them trusting you and knowing that you're going to come and deliver what they need right. and that relationship and those personal skills and, and knowing what they need, actually caring about what they need and asking them questions and asking them, you know, about other shoots you did, like, you know, Hey, you know, what images do you, are, you know, what images have you used them? Like wh which ones did you find the most useful from the previous shoot that I did or, mm -hmm. you know, seeing which ones pop up in magazines and actually watching that stuff. Like there's that, that relationship, game that you've not really a game because it has to be genuine but you've always got to be uh, aware of the relationship like you can't just show up be like i'm an awesome photographer and that's all they're paying me for and snap 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 and here you yeah. go and you know cut it off like it's that's not why they really that's not really why they hire you um they hire you because they believe you know the more time that they put into their relationship with you the more they understand that they have to communicate those needs less and less. And the more that you're intuitively going to understand what, you know, as you shoot with them, what they need. And that's neat. That's easier for them to work with you because you're going to give them what they need faster with less effort as right. opposed to the unknown of, I'm going to go work with this new person. I have no idea if we're going to have that same synergy, you know, mm -hmm. we're already, coming up closer to an hour here. I think we can talk all day on this stuff, but I kind of yes, want to wrap already. it up. Uh, <laughs> wait, no, that's all right. That's all right. I think we, we've gotten definitely good value. Um, I want to ask you one last question. And I, sure. and you actually mentioned this previously um, that you had done this. So people, a lot of people who reach out to me, they're just trying to get their first client, trying to get their first booking and, and really get their name out there. What are your thoughts on shooting for free to build your portfolio? I think understand understand why you're doing it and what you're going to get out of it and what they're going to get out of it. And so uh, if you're shooting for free and you're actually competing with people by doing that, or somebody comes to you and says, Hey, I've got this shoot and you know, you can do like the great exposure, you know, whatever um, you I think to, it's got to be a two way relationship. And you actually, if that great exposure is really going to be meaningful, then those things are worth doing. Um, I tend to veer away from people that approach me to do a free shoot because those are usually people looking for a, something for free, you know, right. Um, uh, what I'll usually do, like I have all kinds of, I do stuff for free all the time. Uh, like those, I don't know if you saw those secret spotlight videos, like that's actually fun for me to just uh -huh. to check into an Airbnb, shoot the whole oh, list. Yeah, yeah. Surprise the owner with it. Like, you know, it's a lot of work, but that's a really fun thing to do because I can do that. An and an actual I'm, reaction out of somebody. And I'm completely in control of that too. It's yeah. like, you know, like you go and you shoot it and I just do whatever I want. And then you deliver this thing. And they're, they're usually like, it's just funny because they're, they're usually so confused because they're like, they expect that there's going to be an ask there somewhere like, all right, so I just shot, they're going to think that, that I want them to buy the pictures from me or, you know, something like that. It's like, I'm really just doing this because for me, one of the greatest joys in the world is when I work with a client that actually can achieve something at the next level that they want to go because of images that are that are more useful to them than when they right. previously had. So working with a new client that's never had a, a real photo shoot before and delivering images that they're like, wow and they, they they're excited about them and they go out and use them and that gets some new opportunities so that's like that's the biggest thrill in the work that i do you know mm -hmm. um and so going back to your question so i don't talk for another hour uh um i think free work is 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 a part of the game i think if you're somebody that never does free stuff to some extent you might be getting too jaded almost like you know like uh 
it's important to know your worth and know your value. Uh, it's important to not be taken advantage of by people that are actually just uh, kind of using that as a reason to get people to do free uh -huh. stuff um, because those are ultimately relationships that very rarely do they turn into something valuable to you. It's more likely that as soon as you want to start charging, they're going to look for the next sort of person that they can exploit to get stuff. But um, if there are situations, even if they come to you, uh, because the, the, the coming to me thing is just a preference because I've just had mixed experiences on that, right. but um, look at the situation and uh, almost like make a list, like, you know, what is in this for me? Uh, what's in it for them? Uh, and just really determine if it's worthwhile. And again, if you do that, get it in writing, like make a contract and also have some asks in that. So they want you to do a shoot for exposure. Uh, and you're like, all right, well, you've got, maybe you have a big, uh, a big social media channel, you know, where you've got like, you know, a million followers on your Instagram and that's why you're asking me to do these pictures or, or whatever it is. Um, uh, put some asks in there, like, all right, I want you to, you know, cover this shoot and tag me in it. So, you know, do during the shoot, do five posts where you're taking pictures of me shooting with you and you're tagging me in those things. And so I'm actually yeah. getting the real exposure from this and I'm not taking your word for it. Um, as long as that situation is clear and concise and you have expectations and they have expectations and everyone's getting what they need, like, you know, money is just another layer of those things. Like ultimately it's all about, it's an agreement that we both mutually agree on and mm -hmm. I do this, you do this and we're all happy. Like barter is just as real as working for money and just look at it. Like even if you need an opportunity and they have seemingly all the power and you have none of it still just approaching somebody saying, this is what I'm going to deliver and having a clear agreement on what that is and feeling comfortable with, you know, if this sheet of paper, if everything on it happens, I will feel good about this, then do it. Um, just don't go into a blind and don't go into two with unrealistic expectations and, you know, you'll be fine, I think. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think it, it's, it's part of the game. Um, I, I always recommend people, you know, um, do as long as you're getting something out of it and, and there's that mutual respect and understanding that hey this is what i'm doing for you this time around this may not be the case as i gain experience but i appreciate the favor um then i think free free work is is kind of the way to get your foot in the door i always recommend it so i agree yeah. with you there um but it's also note, okay I'll... to do something totally for free with getting nothing from it but yeah. you also need to yeah, know yeah. that that's what you're doing too and I think even then, it's almost good to still have an agreement so that, you know, on the other end, they're not expecting something that makes it into a lot of work all of a sudden that you weren't right. originally planning on doing. Right. I agree. Um, yeah, that, I don't want to take up your whole day, but I appreciate the time here and I appreciate everything. Um, yeah, so if, if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll, I'll try and chime in there and um, see if I can offer any suggestions or add, answer any questions. But thank you again, Jeremy. Um, it was a pleasure. And uh, hopefully we can, we can talk again soon. Thank you as well. And uh, yeah, I, I hope I answered your questions. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but it was a real pleasure. And uh, yeah, talk to you again. Awesome, man. All right, keep shooting. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys got good value out of this video. Jeremy was able to answer all my questions and he gave us some really good insights and really good value from a highly experienced photographer of, I think, around 20 years or so. Um, Jeremy's been doing it for a while and I, I think he does phenomenal quality work. So if you guys got any value out of that, do me a favor. Hit the like and subscribe buttons down below because I'd be happy to do more interviews like this one. And uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said before, drop a comment down below and I'll try and chime in there and get back to you guys a little bit. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one. Peace out.